Distinguished guests, dear friends, my very warm greetings to all participants in this first and very important World Anti-Bullying Forum. Protecting children from bullying and other forms of violence at school is not just an ethical imperative or a laudable aim of education policy. It is a question of human rights. Indeed, as we know well, violence in schools compromises children's right to protection from discrimination, to an inclusive and relevant education, to the highest attainable standard of health, to the right of the child to be heard and to have his or her best interests regarded as a primary consideration in all decisions affecting their lives. These are rights enshrined in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which is in force in virtually all countries of the world. The right of the child to protection from violence is now also a fundamental dimension of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development adopted by the Community of Nations in 2015. For the very first time, the development agenda recognizes the elimination of all forms of violence against children as a priority for all countries. And it includes concrete targets to achieve this goal by 2030. Amongst them, it calls for the promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence through education and for the creation of safe learning environments for all. This is really an historic breakthrough. But it will only be meaningful if we all join forces to accelerate progress and make it a reality for each and every child, leaving no one behind. Your important meeting is a major contribution to this effort, but we need to move with a deep sense of urgency. The clock is ticking and there is no room for complacency. Dear friends, we know from sound data and research and from the heartbreaking stories of children around the world that among the various forms of violence affecting children in their schools and communities, bullying is at the top of their concerns. In fact, bullying is the most frequent reason why children call a helpline. It gains center stage in surveys conducted with school children and generates a special interest when opinion polls are conducted through social media with young people. This is well illustrated by the findings from your report, a social media survey that we have conducted with UNICEF and that involve more than 100,000 children and young people in different parts of the world. Nine in every 10 respondents consider that bullying is a major problem. Two-thirds reported that having been victims, and of these, one-third did not tell anybody, not knowing whom to tell or feeling afraid to do so. To acknowledge these deep concerns and find sustainable solutions, the United Nations called for a report on bullying and cyberbullying with clear recommendations for action. My office coordinated this important process and I had the honor to present the report to the General Assembly in October last year. In support of this process, we also issued a new publication, ending the torment tackling bullying from the schoolyard to cyberspace. This important study brings together findings from research as well as reflections and recommendations from leading experts around the world, some of whom are participating in your groundbreaking forum. Our study and the United Nations report presented somber and disturbing findings. The report reminded us of how the impact of any form of violence on children's development and well-being is pervasive, serious and long-lasting. But it further highlighted that in the case of bullying and cyberbullying, it is also surrounded by a deep sense of fear, loneliness and helplessness. As you know, bullying is a hurtful and repeated pattern of aggressive behavior, but it is often part of a continuum that can torment a child at any moment and in many different settings, from the schoolyard to the neighborhood and increasingly into the online world. In fact, with the growing access to information and communication technologies by young people, cyberbullying has become a source of special concern. The spreading of rumors and posting of false information, hurtful messages, embarrassing comments or photos, or being excluded from online networks is particularly traumatic for young people. The anonymity of the online world can be an aggravating factor. 
and most troublingly for victims, cyberbullying can strike at any time of day or night and quickly reach a very wide audience presenting a constant risk and causing deep anxiety and distress. Bullying undermines children's health, emotional well-being and school performance and it leaves scars that may last into adulthood. While victims are the targets, bullies themselves are also negatively affected. And silent or complicit bystanders to bullying often become hesitant or frightened to act, putting at risk the overall school climate and degrading the learning environment. All children may be at risk from bullying, but some are more frequently targeted. Children with disabilities, those on the move, those from disadvantaged backgrounds or those out of school often feel threatened. Children marginalized because of their appearance or because they are perceived as having a gender identity different from what is seen as the norm are especially at risk. In fact, bullying and violence in schools is associated with gender-based violence as part of unspoken, unconscious or hidden attitudes that promote gender stereotyping and affect girls and boys differently, both in terms of victimization and perpetration. Drawing on the significant national experience and expert evidence, the United Nations report made a number of strategic recommendations. In view of their importance for your crucial discussions over the next few days, allow me to address five major headings. First, we need to learn and teach empathy and build a culture of respect for children's rights and of zero tolerance of bullying. It is urgent to raise awareness among adults, including parents, caregivers and teachers, who more often than not miss the signs of bullying even when it occurs in plain sight, who fail to realize the torment it causes or view it simply as a rite of passage. Secondly, parents, caregivers and teachers need advice on recognizing the warning signs and on how to respond. They need better communicating skills to support child victims and to promote nonviolent parenting and disciplining that may help model positive behavior and prevent aggressive, intimidating and abusive actions. Third, Children need, of course, to be at the heart of these efforts. They need to be empowered to prevent and address bullying. And those at risk need to be supported with special protection measures. At school and as digital citizens, it is crucial to involve children in anti-bullying discussions and initiatives to reinforce children's sense of responsibility for their actions and respect towards others to enhance children's skills and confidence to stand up against bullying and to feel reassured and supported with access to counseling, reporting and complaint mechanisms when bullying takes place. Fourth, whole school and whole community approaches are essential to mobilize the genuine involvement and commitment of all stakeholders, to be united in their resolve to secure children's safety, to uphold human rights, tolerance and respect for diversity, to intervene promptly when violent behavior occurs and to monitor progress and impact along the way. Fifth, States' accountability for children's rights and protection needs to be translated into sustained action through a comprehensive, well-coordinated and properly funded policy framework and also through sound legislation to recognize, prevent and address bullying. This is crucial to avoid children's revictimization and also the risk of their further alienation or resentment, and certainly also to set up institutions and services that children can trust and seek when they need advice and support. Finally, it is crucial to invest in research and in reliable and disaggregated data. This will help to break the invisibility of bullying, to shape evidence-based decisions and policy making and to promote lasting change in attitudes and behaviors that put children at risk. As the United Nations report emphasizes, this is an area where further work is needed to develop internationally comparable indicators and monitoring methodologies and to fill knowledge gaps in areas that have been neglected so far. 
Only with this information will light be shed on the true scale and impact of bullying and its victims. Dear friends, these actions are urgent, but they are also within reach. With your strong expertise and support, the spiral of violence that shapes the life of countless millions of children around the world can become part of our distant past. I look forward to cooperating very closely with you in this endeavor. Many thanks.